What is up, Fabrication Nation? So I'm back. Been kind of uh, busy, sick. Last two weeks been kind of crazy. You see, I posted a video yesterday going to Fronius. So I did that thing. And um, I've got a bunch of footage on the goose that I've been kind of making over the last, I don't know, week, week and a half. One of the problems is, I don't know that it's gonna make that much sense. So, that's what I'm gonna do. Just gonna kind of compile it together the best way I can. Um, been doing a lot of cosmetic stuff along with essential things that I need to get done in order to get this thing down the road the way that I want it to. plan to uh, replace the molding on your Fox actually really any any uh, car I recommend you get the like factory style uh, door moldings it's like this one has this u-shaped plastic can you see that Here, let me do this so you can see that it's got this like uh, factory style u-shaped piece on this side that's got like I don't know some steel in there it's like steel reinforced it's uh, pretty substantial, and then the outside is what actually cushions the door. Uh, you can get two kinds of this stuff, or at least LMR, uh, Play Model Restoration, offers two kinds. They offer this factory style, and then they offer a cheaper version that's not what they call factory style. And I'm assuming it's just like, um, it doesn't have the metal reinforcement, it's just the rubber that goes around. And I've used that kind in the past, and I recommend not getting it. This, this right here is so much better. You don't need any kind of weather stripping adhesive for this thing. If you open these up, you can actually see that there's like this see that shiny glue in the bottom of it. So it's going to kind of seal that thing up. And then the fact that this thing has like a steel reinforcement to it, um, when you push this thing onto that, on that, that pinch weld, it uh, it holds itself. It does really good. Doesn't need any kind of glue or anything. And then the corners, what you run into on the on the other style, is in the corners when you bend this stuff. The old, the non-reinforced style will kind of like want to fold out right here, and uh, this stuff doesn't. So anyway, just a little quick tip: if you're gonna replace this, spend like the extra ten bucks, get the good stuff. So cosmetic stuff, I've been ordering a lot of um, just like screws and, and, and bezels and trim pieces, you know, the felt for the windows, a whole new cow piece. A lot of those little things just make the project kind of come together in my opinion. Uh, somebody looks at something and it has, you know, even if it's a really nice car, if it has like old broken plastic clips and old rusted screws and just little stuff kind of takes away from it. I mean, this car is not really that nice. But those are little things that I want to make sure are done on this car.
Listen guys, I've spoke on it before. If you want your projects to stand out, pay attention to the little details. The little details where it matter. Those are the things that people pick up on that they don't even know they pick up on. Right, when you, when you roll up to a car and the little tiny details are really nice, they don't necessarily like see that little thing that's nice, but they just, it just makes the whole project better. So little things. And you can spend a couple hundred bucks putting your weather stripping, door shuts good, you don't have crack stuff around the door. You know, on the Fox bodies, these little plastic pieces that go around the windshield, or even, even a new uh, cow piece. So, like this piece, it's gonna make a huge difference on the way that this car looks. Paint's not perfect. When you have like new pieces that people don't usually replace on there, it's just gonna change it. They're not gonna know what it is, but it's gonna be different. Um, I actually have a cow piece that uh, is just old and um, probably been painted a couple times. Uh, I've also had people ask me, why don't you, you know, fabricate some kind of cow piece? So. This is the one that I had that came off the car. And uh, I mean, I could have scuffed this stuff and painted it and it probably would have looked pretty good, but it wouldn't have looked as good as the one I bought. I hang on to that one just in case. But I also, I don't know where it's at, but I actually did make a fiberglass, I mean not fiberglass, a uh, aluminum piece that goes where the cow used to go back when I used to race uh, the car. But I really, I really want this car on the outside to look, uh, pretty unsuspecting just uh you know basically a really clean four-eyed car on the outside uh, obviously i'm not gonna put the wing on it probably and then i may actually end up putting like some 17 or 18 inch wheels on it so i really want it to blend until you get on the inside and it's go mode under the hood it's go mode so anyway there you go talked about it before a little little tidbit uh, pay attention to the details, the little details, or matters. And then some of the other things that I've got for it, uh, I gotta do the exhaust, I gotta finish that. Uh, boost controller, right now it's just on the gates, which is only five pounds of boost. Feels pretty good, but obviously I want some adjustment. I wanna be able to turn this thing up. So I gotta put that in. Kinda been working on that a little bit. Uh, some of the bezel pieces on the inside of the car need to be finished. Uh, the dash itself doesn't have a dash frame in it anymore, and so I had to kinda make some mounts to kinda secure that thing in there so it's not moving around and rattling and just being rickety.
So as you guys know, if you've been following the channel for a while, I've been wanting to do aluminum exhaust on this thing. I've been kind of working towards it uh, in slow bite-sized chunks. Um, started making the mufflers for it. And it's turned out pretty good. I mean, it looks nice. Um, couple problems though. Obviously one um, that everybody kind of mentions is, you know, is it gonna last? I don't know. I've done this before on some turbo cars that I've built. The exhaust didn't actually go out the back, it stayed up front. Didn't have any issues out of aluminum, no cracking, no issues. I don't know that I'm gonna have the same kind of look with the exhaust going all the way out the back. Uh, so it's kind of an experimental thing. I had you know a bunch of aluminum laying around, so I was like, heck, why not try to make it out of aluminum? If it doesn't work, I'll go back and make it out of some stainless or something. The problem is that I have run out of aluminum. So now I'm kind of in this, uh, do I order another pack of this? Do I spend, you know, hundred bucks and order another pack of aluminum? Or do I spend a little bit more, order all the stainless stuff and go ahead and get some made mufflers that I know what they sound like and just go that route and not fool with it and not have to worry about it breaking and making it again and all that sort of stuff. So as cool as it has been making this, you know, the process of making this, I think what I'm gonna do is just scrap the aluminum. Um, just order the stainless stuff, do that. And because this has kind of been so hit or miss, I haven't really done a build video on this, I will make sure I get the stainless uh, exhaust build video on this car. I'll do like a full video just for that, or at least I'll try. A lot of questions about the Fronius video. So Fronius, obviously I went up there, they make some amazing uh, equipment top-notch uh, quality um, you know they have a lot of tech that is not readily available in the market because they basically patent that technology you're only gonna find it in their machines unless they've maybe licensed it to somebody else or or whatnot I will get a lot more into their machines down the road I'm trying to work something out with them where I can bring uh, their machines to you guys a lot of the questions I get right now though are like you know what about you know Everlast or, or you know, Eastwood or whatever it is. And this is the thing. So just because I'm working with a new company doesn't mean I don't necessarily still believe all the things that I've kind of brought you before, right? So it doesn't change anything. They're not they're not paying me off. They're not paying off my opinion on these machines. Um, you know, the Eastwood and the Everlast machines uh, were kind of in one market, one price point. Um, I think they're really good machines for the money you know, when, you, when you're on a budget and you want to spend under a thousand bucks or something, those are the machines to go with. Fronius is in a different category. Okay, Fronius is going to be a very high-end welder. The price point is going to be a little bit higher. Uh, still very affordable, but just a totally different, totally different animal. So, so some people say, hey, I was going to buy an Everlast. Should I wait? Wait for the Fronius machines to come out? And really, that all depends on what your budget is and what you're looking for in a machine. If you want bar none, the best technology on the market, yes, you wanna wait for a Fronius. If you wanna spend, you know, under a thousand bucks or 1200 bucks, then Everlast is gonna be a great option for you. I mean, this is gonna be the thing that you're gonna kinda of see going forward with this channel is that I'm not gonna be trying, I'm gonna try not to be biased in any way, whether, you know, I'm sponsored by that product or not. I mean, I'm gonna be upfront with those companies and say, hey, look, basically you're not gonna buy my opinion, right? If I think your stuff's great, I mean, I wouldn't be working with a company that didn't have great equipment. You won't see me working with a company that I don't believe in, first and foremost. But they're not going to be able to buy my opinion. I'm just going to take the facts, be the most unbiased person I can, put them in front of you guys, and let you make the decision. You guys are very intelligent people. You can make decisions on what you need. I'm just here to basically let you know what's available. So, sponsored, not sponsored, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to bring you what I can find, tell you how it works, tell you what they got. It's up to you to make the decision on what machines you want, don't want, what's good, what's not. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed that. Well, I don't know. It's kind of a modge podge, hodgepodge of whatever. More stuff coming. I'm going to try to get out maybe one or two more videos this week. I'll see you then. Y'all go do work, son.